The devil's actually going to use this person as a direct personal assignment against my life, against my yeah. family or ministry or whatever the case may be. So that's different. I was able to gauge, okay, this is something serious, but then it's like almost like certain times things fall into a spectrum. Self-deception can lead to being deceived by others. You know, because you can easily take a sign, a simple sign of anything. It'd be a license plate or whatever saying, oh my God, that's my sign. I should move there. All right, everyone, welcome in. Welcome to the Thrive With D podcast. I'm excited today because I have a wonderful guest with me and we're going to be talking about an amazing topic. I cannot wait for you to listen uh, to everything that she's about to share. We're gonna be talking about discernment and I love how she kind of explains it. She says, the deception behind the deception. I want to welcome Melanie Luna. She's amazing. She's a great dear friend. And um, just say hello to the people. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> awesome. I'm not, um, you know, used to doing things like this too much. So, you know, I just need to get a little warmed up, but I'll be okay. <laughs> All good. Listen, um, Thrivers, as you guys are listening to this, it's super um, important that we have discernment in our everyday life. I truly believe that if God didn't want us to have discernment, then it would have never been mentioned in the Bible. I remember when I was in Florida and I was getting to know Melanie and she was talking about discerning um, just behind things, right? We have to be able to know the spirit that's operating behind the thing. Not everything is what it seems to be. There's things that you can see on the outside of appearance and it looks all shiny. It looks great. But on the inside is something that is really demonic or just whether it can be in a business deal, whatever it is, you have to be able to um, just walk in the spirit of discernment. So I want you, Melanie, to go ahead and start just sharing um, with the people um, just about why um, discernment is important to you. Um, well, for me, I think discernment is so important for your walk with God because it keeps you safe. I feel like that is the number one thing. And also what I've learned is that um, it's made for you not to be fearful, you know, because a lot of times we can have a lot of our walk with God can be unknown. You are following an, an, a God you can't see, you know, at the end of the day. So he gives you these spiritual gifts to equip you and to help you as you walk with him. And you get these confirmations from God of what's for you and what's not for you, you know, or who's for you and who's against you or whatever the case may be. And I think that for me personally, um, it's so important. It was always important from the, from the beginning of my walk with God that I was always surrounded by anybody close to me. I always prayed that they would be true godly people. And like, you know, the people that God really wanted me to be surrounded with my family surrounded with. And so I think my journey as I became a believer and just grew stronger in this gift has been all about God showing me, you know, who is safe and who is not safe or it can even be just as simple as the person doesn't have to be evil or against yeah. you, but maybe it's just not for you. That's you know, right. that's, that's it, a good one right just, there. Yeah. It doesn't always have to be that somebody's just evil and you know, they're so bad and you have to just completely stay away. And mm -hmm. that's something I've also learned is gauging. Okay. Like once God shows me something and once I see something, um, you have to remember you're not the judge. God is the judge. Right. So anytime you discern something, it should lead you to a place of inter intercession, to a place of prayer oh. of saying, okay, Lord, I feel like I'm seeing this. I'm sensing this. Um, why are you showing this to me? And so I'll usually get a dream or even just because with discerning a spirit specifically, you kind of yes. feel it through your senses Yes. So it might come through an emotion. It might come, you might smell something, you might hear something or see something um, behind that, you know, something behind that's working behind the person. I'm sorry. Yeah. And um, so it's really quick for us to sometimes judge quickly on, oh, I feel like this person is operating in this. And then you want to kind of go about it your own way. But yeah. that's not really how God designed it to be, you know, right. because I've met people 
So for example, I've had a situation where God basically showed it in dreams and stuff that the demonic entity behind the person was an actual assignment on my life. So Mm -hmm. when I got a lot of confirmation on that, then I knew, okay, this is something to be aggressive about. This is not something to be passive about because the devil's actually going to use this person as a direct personal assignment against my life, against my family or ministry or whatever the case may be. So that's different. I was able to gauge, okay, this is something serious, but Mm -hmm. then it's like almost like certain times things fall into a spectrum. And I know for me personally, um, the Lord has called me and my husband to counsel people more on a one-on-one basis, um, more than being on any sort of like public ministry for right now. We're more so doing just one-on-one counseling with people. And a lot of times, very beautiful. Yeah. I discern things about the person and I get a lot of dreams and sometimes they can alarm you thinking, Oh, is, you know, especially if it's like a seduction spirit or something, you get a little like, oh, you know, is this something I should allow in my house or in front of my husband or whatever? But then God will kind of balance it out and say like, hey, this is what's working, but you're still called to help this person. And you don't always have to tell them everything you see. You know, you just kind of tailor your conversations, you tailor the teachings that you do with them around that and like you little by little start to tear that down whatever it is they're operating in especially if it's just a small seed yeah. you know mm-hmm. and that's what i'm saying like with kind of as you grow in it you learn to gauge it a little bit better where yeah. you know okay is this something super aggressive that it's like it's not just somebody operating in something but it's actually an attack on me or is it i'm still called to help this person or i'm still called to be around this person but um, I just need to be watch out for whatever you discern, yeah. but also don't judge it so quickly without hearing how God wants to judge it or why God is showing you what is operating in that person. Because a lot of the time I find that he wants to deal with it way differently than we do. You know, yeah. a lot of time we it's easy for us to kind of get in the flesh and get angry about it or, you know, kind of like uh, deal with it in the way we would want to deal with it. But if God has a plan and a purpose for that person's life, um, he has a different way of, you know, of of dealing with it. And so at the end of the day, everybody's going to have something, you know? Yeah. So that's that's really good. And I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to backtrack really, really quick before we keep going, because you said a few keys here that I kind of want to go back on. But before we go back to it, I just want to say this really, really quick for some of the people who are listening, for some of the people who are like, okay, I kind of, I know what discernment is, but I don't really know the fullness of what discernment is. Because I feel like for some people, I feel like they should have a definition really quick. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because I've seen where people are like, um, that's not discernment you're operating and you're just sitting there going around trying to judge everyone. But I want you to understand what this, what discerning of spirits is, why, why we need it and why it's so vital. I remember my husband telling me that that's the number one gift that he was praying for. And the reason why he told me why he was praying for it is because he wanted to um, know. He told me that he wanted to know the motive of men, the motive of the people that were around him. All right. So discerning of spirits is it's a supernatural revelation or insight into the realm of spirits to detect them and their plans and to read. This is what it says and to read the minds of men. You can look at it as to read the hearts of men. And you can mm-hmm. also look at it as to, to discern the spirit of men around you to, to pick up on their motive and what's going on. So when Melanie said a key here that her husband and her, what they do is they counsel people, right? And when they counsel people, and that's something that God has entrusted them with, because she said she has dreams. So we already see where God is entrusting her with a gift and with his, his, his child, with, with people, um, with our brothers and our sisters. Right. And so if she's having these dreams, she can't just, after she has dreams, just be like, you know, start talking bad about the person or anything. She has to really understand how to deal with the dream that she's seeing. That's a beautiful Mm -hmm. gift of discerning, being able to say, all right, 
separating from how I may feel naturally to what's going on here in the spirit. I just want you to go um, mm -hmm. back to that really quick where you talk about um, it was the dreams that you were talking about. But just how have you seen that in dreams? Like how I'm going to use a baseball analogy. If you're batting, like, you know how they say you're batting average? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how consistent have you seen that when God has given you a warning through your dreams, how consistent has that been through what actually manifests in the physical? I would say extremely consistent. Wow. I mean, I, and I'm not saying that in any sort of way because it's me. I'm just saying like, I think because I fully yield to it and I fully trust that the dreams that God has given me are, you know, I just believe in them yeah. because you know what? I think a lot of times, especially when people, they desire the gift of discerning of spirits. I think a lot of times what can stop it from fully um, really operating in its fullness is when we want to put our own biased opinions, maybe on a person or maybe because we genuinely do love the person, you Say know, that again. Say that yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> we put our own biased opinions of if, you know, if we love the person or we don't want to believe that, mm. you know, that can be really operating. And so dreams bypass our conscious, you know, they bypass yeah. Or they go straight to our conscious, really. They don't bypass the conscious, but they just bypass our own human thinking way of thinking about people, about things, about situations. And so he gets you when you're sleeping where you can't, you know, kind of fight back on what he's trying to show you. You know, the dream said what it said. Yeah. And so I fully have yielded to that. And I don't negate anybody. I don't negate anything. Come on. God knows more than we do. He sees the inner workings of a person. He sees what demons are attached to this person or their motive or just, yeah, anything. It could be demons or just human motive, you know? And so um, he sees everything. And so I don't care how much I know a person, how much I thought I knew a person. <laughs> if God is telling me through a dream or some sort of sense with discernment, that there's even a little seed of something, I believe him. And so I think that's why the dreams happen so consistently and they always manifest in that way. A lot of times my dreams are kind of literal, so it mm -hmm. usually manifests pretty accurate and spot on. But it's because, again, I either get the sense and then I get the dream or I get the dream and then I get the sense one or the other, but I yeah. always pray about it. I always ask the Lord, okay, so, you know, what is this? Why are you showing me? What's the level of this? How am I going to take care of it? And so he'll begin to give me even multiple dreams, you mm -hmm. know, um, especially if um, it's somebody that he really wants us to help, or it's somebody yeah. that my husband is coming alongside with um, business or whatever, a lot of times I've had dreams in the past, even with that of like, you know, I don't know if this person, you know, has the same motive as you, or if it's something yeah. that they should be, you know, you guys would actually really be par good partners with. I've had that's, that in the past. That's well. a good one. This is a good one right here. Yeah. I want to pause on this one. This is a key thing that you're saying right here, because a lot of the, a lot of people, I'm going to say, especially, um, believers, when they hear discernment, a lot of people are just discerning what's happening in the church. Um, when in reality, your discernment should be everywhere. Yes. Right? Everywhere. If yeah. You have the Holy spirit. It's just like we tell the children, there's no junior Holy spirit, the Holy spirit that's in you at church, the Holy spirit should be with you at work. So mm -hmm. you have pay attention to how the Holy Spirit responds to a matter that is going on around you. I'm going to say mm -hmm. that again. Pay attention to how the Holy Spirit in you is responding to a matter that is that is going on around you. So that includes business deals. That includes business partners. Maybe you decided, you know, you're like, well, this, it makes sense logically to be in business with somebody. But then Yes, the spirit, there's a radar that starts to go off and God is really trying to communicate with your spirit man and tell you, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. But then there's people who just like completely bypass it. And the next thing you know, their business goes up in flames. Something happens way yeah. later, right? 
Mm -hmm. Yep. And like I said in the beginning, because it's called, it's made to make you safe. That's the whole yeah. point of discerning of spirits, you know, is that it is, okay. you're, I love that. you're able to discern the spirit of a thing, mm -hmm. you know, behind the deception behind the deception. Because a lot of times people put a different face on, they can look yeah. sweet. I mean, I've seen it all. I've seen people look sweet and innocent and, and, you know, just so charming, but the behind it, the motive is not right. And even with the word charming, that was a new one that actually the Lord showed me recently. Yeah. I looked at someone and this person, you know, was a godly person and, you know, on the outside looked fine, yeah. but I saw something and I was like, Hmm, I wonder what that is. And that's sometimes I just get a little red flag. It doesn't yeah. have to be anything big. And I'll just say, what is that? And before I went to bed that night, I heard the Holy spirit say charm is deceitful hmm. the scripture in Proverbs 31. Yeah. And I started going a lot of times. That's what I'll do too. I'll go. I went into a whole thing about charm. I looked up what does the word charm really mean? And, you know, even when you think about a charm bracelet, a lot of times it has to do with luck or, you know, uh, it can even be part of the occult and different things. But mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is with this specific person with the charm, it felt like something so small and it was just a small seed, mm -hmm. but charm can still be used to deceive people, yeah. you know, to make you think that there may be more just the forefront is like that they would never do anything wrong or they would never Absolutely. think of anything wrong of you. You know, when it's you think of like, somebody, it's just like um, flattery, but in, in that sense, right. of charm, you know, when people they'll flat, they'll say words to you, they'll um, with their words, <clears throat> it'll sound like everything's all good. But deep down in their their spirit, it's just it's nothing but negativity towards you. Do you get? Yes. What yep. Um, exactly. Envy all these different type of things. So you got to really, um, really, really look into that. Um, as you were speaking, I was thinking about I was thinking about Acts. I was thinking about Acts. Is it Acts sixteen? I think when Paul was disturbed by the girl. Mm -hmm. when, he was just, when he was disturbed by the girl and she kept on, you know, basically praising them, praising them. And then all of a sudden he was, he was like really perturbed in his spirit um, because that comes with it too, because it's, it was just like flattery. Oh my God, these men, these, these, men, these men, these, you know, all these works yeah. are saying all of these great, um, all of these great words, as many of you know, the story and acts, but at the same time, when Paul was perturbed, <clears throat> he started realizing that there's something wrong. There's mm -hmm. something absolutely wrong here. And a lot of times it does start with aggravation. Come on. There's been a lot of times where I'm like, again, but I'll pr always, I don't care how accurate I've been in the past, how many times I've been right. Me personally, I'm always like, okay, I always check me first. I'm like, I Lord. I love that you said that. Am I, I aggravated at this person in my flesh or like, right. why am I so aggravated <laughs> when even, you know, they're just existing, but something yeah. is aggravating. <laughs> I love that you said that because this is real. And if anyone who's watching right now can relate, I want you to leave a comment and just tell me how you can relate to this because there's been times like I've been in a, in a, in an area or I'll see something online. Right. And I'll be talking to my husband and I'm like, this thing for some reason is just, I'm perturbed by it. Like, yeah. It's bothering me. I can't, I can't get over it. He's like, he would just be like, mm. he'd be like something. I just let you know, something's off. Or here's what I used to do. I used to say, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe he's like, no, it's not you. We're starting. Yeah. To it is. It is not you. There is something wrong. And that's why. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. I love. That and sometimes, that yeah, you yourself. feel like I'm sorry. Go ahead. I do love that you said check yourself first. I, I really love that because that's what I, I try to always do is that's why. I would go to that place of where I'm saying, well, maybe it's just me instead of just not blaming me, but just checking really quick, diagnosing the situation. That's what discernment is really. You're really diagnosing what's going on. <laughs> yeah, literally. I almost feel like sometimes like a detective or something. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> secret <laughs> investigator. Yeah. But um, I was going to say, yeah, a lot of people especially when you naturally have discerning of spirits. Cause I, for me, I think I've 
had it my whole life. I just mm -hmm. didn't know, especially when I was unsaved. I just always knew things about people. Even in high school, I didn't have a lot of friends because I would see like now looking back at specific people, I'm like, oh, they had a mocking spirit. And I remember this one specific person wow. that I never want. I just can see it on her face, but I didn't know what it was. I just stayed away, you know? And um, now looking back, I remember, I'm like, I think that's what it was. And so for me, I've had it all the time, but I did just didn't know it. And so when I started to realize that it was one of my main gifts, a lot of times what I've heard from other people who've always had discerning of spirits is they say, well, I feel like I'm always judging or criticizing, but mm -hmm. I always say, well, usually when people are judging and criticizing, they're not going to say, I feel like I'm judging and criticizing. <laughs> so I feel like that's a number one sign of like, it's probably discerning of spirits yeah. because you you're actually checking with yourself and making sure but um, to where I think somebody who's just criticizing the outside, I don't think they're really yeah. aware, you know, of like making sure they're not doing that. They Listen, just kind of do it. I have, I've heard, I've heard it a lot, especially because my, my husband operates a lot in more, like, I, I would say I have discernment. I have discernment, but I, my husband's discernment is on a whole nother level um, <laughs> from mine, like a whole nother level where I'll be like, yeah, sure. Like why we should do something. And next he's like, no, absolutely not. And then yeah. he will be absolutely right. His radar is just a little bit more um, <laughs> deeper than mine. When <laughs> it's just something he has been practicing for a hot minute. And um, he, you just, you really have to just hone in and practice, practice it. But another thing is that when people feel judged like that, you have to understand that you have to discern a spirit behind the thing. I remember right, yeah. um, 2020 when I remember I had this dream and I share this so often and, and I'll tell you why I share it. Um, it's because this was going to be, who knew 2020 was going to be the launching pad of so many false prophets. So um, with that being said, I remember when I had this dream, I think, I don't know if it was like February or March. And I remember just in this dream, I heard this sound that was going off on my iPad. It was music at first. And then the music started getting a little distorted when someone entered there. We, I was sleeping and someone was trying to enter the room. And, um, and then I saw where it was like these guys and I knew there were prophets. And I remember, well, not like prophet, prophet. I just knew they were, they represented prophets. And my husband was like, he basically said, they're all G-A-Y. I'm spelling it for the tube. And he said that. <laughs> and when he said that, I knew we knew immediately that he was talking about the spirit of perversion um, that would be on them. So whether they're prophets, not prophets, whether the spirit of perversion is upon them, whatever it is, I just knew that there was going to be a time where there's going to be so many voices that was going to be released and people were going to be listening, but they weren't going to be able to dis discern the false from the real, discern the spirit of perversion um, that's mm -hmm. on some people. And they're just stuck in that mud. I want you, Melanie, to be able to um, speak about that right now, because there's so many like there's so many young people who are deceived. There's so mm -hmm. many believers, Christians who are deceived, Lord Jesus, and <laughs> just following every hot new topic or every hot yeah. new person that comes on the scene without being able to look at its fruit or anything. They just say, you can prophesy, you prophesy accurately. Um, I don't know if you're getting your witchcraft powers from demons. I don't know what you're doing. I just know there's miracles and they're not, not knowing there's false miracles. Um, right. Kind of just, you know, teach on that a little bit or speak on that a little bit. There you go. Well, I would say your number one defense is always truth and you always find truth in the Bible. And I think that is the number one way to sharpen your discerning of spirits is reading the Bible. Because when you really read just how Jesus operated, I would say, especially even um, the gospel specifically, only because you can see Jesus doing miracles, you can see how he operated in deliverance, you can see, you know, how he was with different people, how he reacted to Pharisees, how he reacted to the crowd, how he reacted to disciples. And you can just really start to see it from the lens of how Jesus would interact with people in whether it was just him as a person or whether he was teaching or whether he was performing a miracle. And 
when you really look at it that way from the lens of like, okay, I'm looking at the perspective of how Jesus operated in all of these things, yep. you can spot somebody that's not doing it God's way very easily, mm -hmm. you know? And also I would say, make sure you yourself are not deceived, self-deceived in yeah. any area, because when you're self-deceived, it's very easy to fall for a deception. For what, example, what, can you tell us what is self-deceived? What, what is that? So the Bible says that um, Jesus, you know, walked in truth and reality mm -hmm. and we are to walk, you know, we are to worship in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Truth is reality. And so God wants to bring every single one of us into a reality of who we really are, where we really, where we really are at in life and maybe what's operating in us. Um, so that way we can properly not only walk with God properly and he can help us properly because we're not hiding certain aspects of ourselves from him, mm -hmm. but we can also see others with truth when we ourselves are seeing ourselves with truth. You know what I'm saying? Instead of key here, truth is reality. Mm -hmm. So you're basically saying if someone is not seeing themselves in truth, they're basically, basically seeing themselves in a distorted reality. Basically almost. Yeah. For example, I knew someone before who thought they were further along in their walk with God than they actually were. And that wasn't me judging. It was just from, you know, how they responded to certain things right. or whatever. You just knew they were a little bit, you know, which is fine. Yeah. God can grow you. But yeah. what I tried to explain this, to this person was that the more you accept that reality of where you really are, then um, God can help you accurately. You know, mm -hmm. he can help you because you have to humble yourself and say, yeah. okay, I don't know everything. I don't, yeah. you know, I'm not actually where I think I am. Yeah. And so, for example, but this person still didn't really want to accept the fact that maybe they're not as mature in their walk as they thought and that they needed a little bit more help than they thought they needed. And so they fell for um, just certain people, a lot of prophetic words, a lot mm -hmm. of things, you know, that as, tells them a lot of promises and a lot of good things, which is great. All those yeah. things are great. But the Lord was trying to bring this person into a process because yeah. you know the prophetic words and everything that's the promise but with every promise there is a process there that is. god wants to take you through so you can eventually receive that promise or for that prophetic word to come to pass yeah you know and so a lot of times people want to bypass that and i think that's why they fall for a lot of the prophetic words and kind of like the magic bullet of like receiving the miracle and not having to go through the process. And but you can't bypass it, y'all. Like you no. can't bypass the process. <laughs> I had to go through a process this week myself. It doesn't it's matter. It's never ending. Yeah. Never. It doesn't matter where <laughs> you are in your walk with God. There's a process. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I was like, God, like I'm getting the, like, I felt like I was just like, I was like, Lord, I mean, but he corrects those who he like, who he loves. Right. right? Exactly. So like, yeah. I felt like I was getting corrected all week this, like every day this week. I was like, Dang, well, God, you love, <laughs> love is strong right now, Lord. <laughs> love me so felt. much. <laughs> yesterday I was correcting on something. And then today, this was just me. I just like, I, it was a, it was a realization. And I think that's why I stopped you when you said, a distorted reality. When I said distorted reality in, um, in return to what you said, when you talked about the truth and reality and here mm -hmm. it is, because there's something that I saw that kind of perturbed me. And when, and when I was perturbed, all of a sudden I was just like, oh, I was about to act and I was about to get in the flesh. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I got in my car to go get groceries and the Holy ghost got me and Holy spirit was just like, uh, uh, check yourself. And when mm. I check, I'm telling, I'm just letting y'all know right now, because mm -hmm. I am a person, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm going to, I'm human. And right. when I yeah. check myself, and that's the beautiful thing of being humble, because when I checked myself, cause I was about to respond in the flesh in a negative way. 
And then I, and then I checked myself in the car. And as I checked myself, I said, Lord, help me. I said, I repent for the way I was about to act. I repent for any ill motive in me that may have, like, I just, I'm not thinking straight. God forgive me. And then I'm going to tell you what my last word is, because this is usually my last word. Every single time I'm praying, praying to God, I'd be like, God, I really want to get in heaven. <laughs> Jesus, I do. I'd be talking to myself. I might like the people who are driving next to me might think I'm crazy, but I'd be like, fix it, Jesus. And mm -hmm. if you can't do that with yourself, Right. You are deceived because you got to be able to get you got to be able to humble yourself and say, God, there was something that was about to manifest in me. That's not like you. Right. Yeah. And then you can accurately because when you can discern things for yourself, not even just whether it be an attitude check, a heart yeah. check or even maybe a demonic spirit operating, not even just that, but it can even be just checking with, you know, being able to discern your season, being able to discern when God is talking through maybe even somebody you in your eyes may look ins insignificant, but God is actually talking, you know, through this person for you. Yeah. You know, I, I've noticed even a lot of people, it's hard for them to discern things like that. And then they miss a prophetic moment or they miss, you know, something or they bypass a season where God really wanted them to be in because they kind of couldn't discern that season and they just went with maybe what they wanted or they went with a prophetic word that they got and they no. didn't measure, you know, they didn't measure the prophetic word. Okay. Does that line up with the season that I'm in that I know God has spoken to me about personally? This is you mind know? blowing, mind, mind, mind blowing right now because this very day that we are recording this podcast, um, I have a witness and I'm not going to say her name, but I remember I, I called her earlier today because um, she actually, was it yesterday, the day before she said, Hey, I feel like, you know, you got to pray over the prophetic words that were spoken, that was spoken over your life, you know, and, and it's a dear friend of mine and everything. When she said, I said, I said, okay, yeah, you know, we're going to pray over this. And um, it just so happens that we're entering a new, we've entered a new season where this is like, a time where usually I would have fought something like this. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because when you said to yeah. discern the season, I usually would fight something like this. And it's where God is taking us in an era. My husband was more so in this. I did it behind the scenes more. And it was only because I'm going to tell you why. Because like I said, I like to keep it really real. Because I used to care so much about the opinions of people and what they're going to say and what they're going to think of me. But my husband, used to, my husband would do it and he'd be just fine. But God has put, it, put us in a season of where um, it's ministry and also where we're now putting the biz, like business and uh, wealth, where we're talking about all of these more up front. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, back then, you couldn't get me to say anything about it. <laughs> I remember I'll be like, oh, my God, are you talking about wealth or prosperity? These people are going to like they're going to come for you. That's how I felt. I think, I think I'm yeah, like this. But I saw mm -hmm. where God slowly started to wake me up to not have the, the mindset, the poverty mindset, the lack mindset and the mindset that God can't bless us and the mindset that we can't have wealth. God started mm -hmm. to shift that for me when he started, when there's prompt things he started me to ask for. And I was like, I don't, I don't like to do that. I don't <laughs> want to do it, but he, he, he shook me a little bit. And today I was listening to the prophetic words that were spoken over our life. And I think I, maybe I skipped those parts the prophetic words had to do with wealth and generational wealth and building businesses and building schools of business. And I was mm -hmm. like, Lord, <laughs> we're in that season now. And it's, just, it's something I was just like dying and running away from. So when you said right. to discern the seasons, that was very, that's like, that's very important to me mm -hmm. right now because the sons of Issachar had to know how to discern, they had to know the times and the seasons. Yeah. You know? Because it's easy to get deceived by also these people like you were saying yeah. that are spewing out false prophetic words, or maybe they're accurate, but it's not for right now, or, yeah. you know, whatever the case may yeah. be, but you can be deceived into so many different things, not even yeah. just in church, but maybe with a job or maybe, I don't know, anything. And if you cannot discern the season you're in, it's, it's hard. You're going to be kind of being blown back and forth by all these different things and kind of confused yeah. because kind of knowing that season will, is that kind of restrained for that season of saying, okay, 
Mm-hmm. I get that other people are doing that or this person said this, but that's not my season right now. You know, I'm going to put that in my back pocket for later. Yeah, Somebody can come in and say, you know, I mean, I've seen it from people moving to another state, to another church. Yeah. That, you know, the leader somehow deceived them into moving there. And but because maybe they didn't know their season that they were in and really properly um, just being able to follow, whether it be the voice of God or just like the leading of the spirit in that situation, they go and get deceived. And but again, even with situations like that, there was a self-deception where they said, okay, this is going to fill some sort of void that I'm looking for. This is going to fill a need that, you know, I'm looking for. And instead of checking with the Holy spirit first or with God first, they kind of maybe even, um, cause you know, you can kind of make shift anything to be a sign that goes along with what you want in your head to happen. Absolutely. You know? And so that's what I'm saying with self-deception can lead to being deceived by others, mm-hmm. you know, because you can easily take a sign, a simple sign of anything. It'd be a license plate or whatever saying, oh, my God, that's my sign. I should move there. <laughs> you know, I know. But that's, you're right. That's you're absolutely right. <laughs> right. That's what I mean by self-deception. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and I'm not saying that that can't be because yeah. God can talk through anything. But that's what I mean, how sneaky it can be with discerning a spirit or discernment is like knowing when things are God and when they're not. When it's yeah. God and when it's just you, you know, and maybe yeah. to be true, you know. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, discerning the season will help you to not be all over the place. So that way, when you do receive prophetic words, you know how to measure it according to your season. You know, okay, that's accurate, but I'm going to save that for later. That's not what God is talking to me about right now in this season or what I should be focusing on. You know, I think that's more of a future thing or whatever the case may be. And um, when you're able to do that, you're, you're less subjective to being deceived just knowing your season knowing what god is talking about you personally reading your bible um all of all of those things help with um not being deceived and being able to also discern what's going on behind a matter not just discerning you know something on the outside right and that's how you know it's a discerning of spirits because a lot of times i know for me what i'm discerning is quite literally the opposite of what I see on the outside. Like, I'm like, I know it cannot be me because me in the flesh yeah. looking at whatever, it looks fine. It doesn't look evil at all, mm-hmm. <laughs> you I know, mean, but yeah. yeah, when you discern it behind, it's like, wow, what I'm discerning or what the dream that I got is mm-hmm. like, man, it's the total opposite of what I would be looking at, you know, in person or what the person portrays to be, Absolutely. you know, you know, and with discernment, Um, I love discernment because it helps with your maturity. Um, Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is there's so many people who are out there who don't know, who don't study the word, who they they don't become Berean. They don't become people who sit and try to understand um, the meaning behind the word of what you're reading there th- this word this context um this bible i'm gonna try to get my bible here this bible that we're reading mm-hmm. there's different meanings to it you know this was of course transcribed in english but you have to understand what it was written in the hebrew and in the greeks and so you got to understand um the meaning behind something right mm-hmm. and so there's, yeah. there's people who don't even they don't even try to go to that level what I've seen people do, most people who lack discernment are people who don't have the word in them. And most yes. people who lack yeah. discernment are the people who just hop from one prophet to another prophet to listen to teachings. They have n- nothing on their own. And um, that's that's very wearisome. It's scary. Um, mm-hmm. That more, more, There's a lot of people who just, they don't have solid teaching either. So they're, they're, they're not stable. But yeah. I have to say this with discernment, what I've learned for us, what it's done, it's kept us. And I know a lot of people, some people may think it's strange, um, but my husband and I don't collaborate with a lot of people. And uh, (laughs) when I have, well, I can't say when I have a stage, God has given us the opportunity to where, where we have meetings, we have services and we don't bring everybody on a platform. Um, And there's a reason for that. 
Mm-hmm. And we're not judging people. It's just if, if we don't have the like a hundred percent green light, we just don't do it and we don't we don't try to do it. I'm yeah. not trying to collab with anyone just for the sake of likes. And a lot mm-hmm. of people do that and then it turns around and it bites them in the butt. Yeah, and then you never because everything is spiritual. So if you bypass your conscience. And even though you know something is off, but you still invite them on stage anyway, whatever is operating in them is being released to the crowd, you know? So it's not just about you or looking good or whatever. It's about this the happened to at us. the end of the day, you know? It happened to us in one of our meetings. I remember there was this, um, this, this pastor who was given a story about this um, apostle who was head over um, him actually. Um, and he was a powerful apostle, seen miracles, done all these things, fasted, prayed and everything. And there was this girl who had this issue where she was kind of, uh, it was like a deaf and dumb spirit. Um, and she, she came and everywhere she would go, she wasn't healed. Like there was no, there was no miracle. Like no one can, no one could get her delivered. But when the apostle just kind of like touched her head that spirit left and she was fine. Right. Well, I heard like a few weeks later, he had this woman come who was, who called herself. She was a prophet. She has, she came, but she was a false prophet. And when she came, she released like whatever she came with, everything she came with, a demonic spirit that was upon her. When she came into that church, it wreaked havoc. I don't understand what happened. Sometimes people are blinded by that. It wreaked havoc in the church. And that girl who was delivered, the spirit came back even wow. more. And so, yeah, we don't play about um, who we have, who we invite, no, no, anything of that sort. And, you know, sometimes you may not get it like 100%. But my God, we're praying right. about it. You know what I mean? When, when yes. instead of just wanting mm-hmm. to be on everyone's platform uh, or wanting to uh, watch everything someone does or just really like pay attention to mm-hmm. who you're partnering with. Like there's yeah, who you're listening else. to. Because even online, even if you're just listening to somebody online, yeah. but, you know, depending on what's operating behind, you can start to get those same ideologies or those same things that are hidden behind them that you don't see. I've seen on social media and I'm, I'm going to end with this. I've seen on social media where so many people are just like goo goo gaga after like one person. And I'm like, I love them. And I'm sure Jesus, Jesus loves them. And I'm, I'm sure they're loved. I was like, but do y'all not see that spirit that is operating? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'm going to tell you why sometimes people don't want to see it. Sometimes people don't want to see it because people want to ladder climb. That's number one. I'm talking about for the people who want to share pulpits with other people. Yeah. Sometimes other people don't want to, can't see it because they, they, like you said, there's no truth, right? They don't have enough word in them. And I think sometimes some people see it and they turn a blind eye. Yeah. A lot of times they might bypass their conscience or what they're seeing and compromise, whether it be again, when, you know, you're more self-aware and think, okay, when you come to the identity of Christ and you know, okay, you're not going to be a people pleaser. You have your boundaries. You know, you learn all of these things about yourself and who you are in Christ. You're less susceptible to compromising in those areas. Even though you see something, you don't see it. You know, you're more susceptible to stand your ground and to your convictions when you know who you are. And even if you're the only one, that sees it, you're going to stand behind it and say, you know what, even if everybody else doesn't want to, you know, see it or whatever, I'm going to stand on my ground. I don't want to bypass what I feel and get in trouble. Cause again, it's supposed to keep you safe at the end of the day, you and your family. And you know what? I wanted to share something that I posted a few weeks ago on my page that was Um, actually I got it off of a teaching from Derek Prince. Mm -hmm. I really like his teaching about discernment or, uh, the nature of witchcraft and all of these things, but it's six signs of those who could be a candidate for deception. So these are six signs that Derek Prince made of like, okay, these are ways to check yourself. So that way you can make sure, you know, you don't fall for deception. And number one was those who rely only on subjective impressions. So I'm assuming that means maybe people that are just wanting things only for themselves. You know, they're kind of subjective or wanting 
um, an impression only that's according to their wor world, maybe, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, the second one is those who only look to human leaders without ever checking the source. Ooh. So I think that kind of looks like what you were saying, jumping from leader to leader, from conference to conference or from teaching to teaching, but without actually or prophecy to prophecy, without checking the fruit and the source of where, you know, this person is coming from. The third one is those who accept only supernatural signs as a guarantee of truth. Mm. So like you said, even, you know, you can't just look at the supernatural signs as the guarantee that, okay, this is real. This is Jesus. Yeah. Um, and then the fourth one is through personal ambitions are susceptible to flattery, especially mm. ministers. So as a minister, it's very easy to fall into flat or to, I guess, fall for the flattery of others. Oh my God. My God. You know? So if you have personal selfish ambition, you kind of are looking for that flattery from other people. But again, that can, you can easily fall into the deception. Mm. And so that's what I'm saying with. That's always, what I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah. Always checking yourself, always checking mm. your heart, always checking your, your ambitions. Are they selfish ambitions? What are my real motives? You know, because then you can fall into yeah. the flattery of other people if you are secretly, without even knowing, looking for the attention of other people. Sometimes yeah. you don't even know it, you know? Yeah. So that's why it's good to check with the Lord, like, okay, am I doing this for only you or do I want Come secretly on. also the applause of men, you know? So number five is those who are unwilling to face the possibility of suffering or persecution, they will be deceived because the Bible says to expect suffering and persecution. So somebody who only promises good or only wants to see, you know, only good, um, that can be where you fall for deception as well, because um, the Bible talks about um, being one with the sufferings of Christ. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you share in his glory, we also share in his sufferings, mm -hmm. carrying your own cross dying to yourself. That's not very pleasurable to your flesh. I mean, it's yeah. not at all, yep. you know? And so you can't only expect any, everything to be positive, happy all the time. And of course the Bible talks about having joy in these sufferings, but that's a supernatural joy because you know, you're doing it for Christ, exactly. you know, by positive and happy. I mean, something that's like, you know, only like you, you'll never go through anything hard, basically, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not the reality of following God. Yeah. And the sixth one is those who are ignorant of scripture. So those are the six signs of candidates who are, you know, you can be subjective to deception or your discernment not being super um, on point where it should be. Mm -hmm. And so, um, always for me, I always think making sure you're reading the scriptures, making sure you're walking in spirit and in truth, which is reality and always abiding in Christ, making sure you're continually depending on him. It never stops. I don't care how grown you are. I don't care how many imp impressive Christian words you can use. I don't care how long you can pray in tongues. I don't care how well you can prophesy. You are never outgrown to the dependence of Christ. That's right. We need them every day, every yeah. hour. Every <laughs> we definitely need them. Um, yeah. This was awesome, Mel. Um, there's one thing I heard um, that I just, I'm going to share, I'm going to say one point and then I'm going to really share, uh, just really share how you guys can connect with Melanie. Um, I heard someone say today, that Christians know how to be Christians a lot in church, but it's when they get outside, outside those four walls, sometimes they don't know, they don't, they don't take what they've learned from scripture um, at church and really apply it. So everything mm -hmm. that we share today, that Melanie has really shared today, um, you're someone on here, just be praying for discernment, ask God for discernment. The scripture says to lift up your voice, to, to ask God, ask God for discernment and also get mm -hmm. in your word because 
Um, there's so much that's happening these days and we're living in times where it's, it's only growing rampant where people will be deceived. And mm -hmm. so as we're living in those times, ask God for discernment so that you can make wise decisions for yourself, for your family, so that you can live out the life that God has called you to live out. That's what's important. I want every single person to thrive in every aspect of their life. Um, so really just get deeper in your relationship. Um, Melanie, it was so great having you. This was an amazing yes, thank you conversation. Um, I really love it. And she, she's, she's amazing. And she loves to take her time and, um, teach and, uh, really God has really called her, um, to women, to building godly women. Okay. To helping godly women and, um, her IG, I'm going to tell you guys what it is right now. It's at godly woman, right? At godly at woman co on Instagram. There you mm -hmm. go. At godly woman. <laughs> Oh, and then her YouTube channel, so you guys can listen to some of her podcasts as well, is Godly Woman Co Dash Melanie Luna. All right. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to connect with her. Her and her husband are phenomenal people. And listen, if this has blessed you today, I want you to go ahead and leave a comment in the chat. Go ahead and leave a comment, share this, and bless somebody else and let them know. Um, and God bless you. Bye bye.